everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Cooler Master GM32-FQ gaming monitor. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this monitor or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging, a couple of key tech specs and features for us to go over. This has 2K resolution at 2560 by 1440p. That's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. The screen is 32 inches measured diagonally, 165 Hertz refresh rate, which is fantastic. One millisecond response time MPRT for the those that are interested. 95% DCI-P3 for you color snobs out there. Adaptive Sync also works with G-Sync, low blue light, HDR 400. This has a lot going for it, so I'm excited to go ahead and try it out. Now let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our warranty information. This monitor does come with the two-year hardware warranty. Next, you're looking at the quick start guide with the QR code walks us through everything that's included in the box, how to install the base, how to connect everything. We have wall mounted bracket installation as well as all of our menu buttons and controls. We have some safety and compliance information as well as our specs. Nice spec sheet right there. Next, we have the two pieces for the stand. Definitely high quality construction. They're nice, made out of metal, definitely durable. We have our grip feet on this side with our threaded connector that we can just use our fingers to tighten down in place, like so. That'll go just like that. Then you're looking at all of our cables right here. We have an HDMI cable, display port cable, power cable, and our power supply right here. We also have cable management clip, and we have four screws and a tool to install the stand to the monitor. So here's the back of the monitor. The four screws gonna go right there to fasten everything together. And lastly, we have the monitor itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. Here's a look at the back side of the monitor. We got the Cooler Master logo and branding up here in the corner. This monitor is extremely thin for the top half and a lot thicker at the bottom. Visa mount, all of our menu and control buttons right here as well as our power button. Let's tip it up so we can see all of the ports and I.O. So power plug connector. We have our display port, two HDMI ports, USB type C, headphone jack. On this side, we have two USB ports we can use. Let me tip it sideways. So you can get a feel again for how thin this is up at the top and how much thicker it is down here at the bottom. We'll tip it up this way as well too, just to see from a couple different angles to get a feel for that, but it's very, very slim. Now we'll look at it from the front of the monitor, our beautiful 32 inch display, near bezel list design. Now I do notice on the screen itself, I can see where the pixels end. So where my nail is from my thumb right there, that's where the screen's gonna stop. So you will have almost like a digital bezel where it's not gonna illuminate the pixels to the very edge of the screen. But the design looks really nice. Cooler Master logo and branding down here. This is an IPS panel. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. Step one is to go ahead and attach the first piece here with the four included screws to the back of the monitor. Here's a look at the screws right there. And they do give us a Phillips head screwdriver. So go ahead, line up the holes and install those four screws. So we have the four screws fastened in place. There we go, step one is complete. Now it's time for the second and final step. We're gonna take this piece right here. It's only gonna fit one way. It's gonna line right up with the piece we just fastened in. And now on the back side, go ahead, pop out this little handle and you can twist it finger tight in place. So we got it finger tight. You could also use a tool if you really wanted to. But there we go. We now have our stand installed. Look at that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now let's go ahead. Let's check out all the different options we have with the stand and how we can configure the monitor on our desktop. So first up, we have the option. We can swivel it to the left or to the right. There's our max on each side. We can also adjust the height up and down. We're at the lowest height setting right here. Here's our maximum height setting. Now let's talk about tilt. So that's our max tilt down. We can tilt this back. Let me do that from the side for you. So tilt back max, tilt down max. And then if you're wondering, can we rotate this to get a nice vertical or portrait viewing experience? We cannot do that. 
with this particular monitor, you would have to get your own monitor stand to be able to have that functionality. But we do have height adjustment. We have a nice rotation and swivel right there. And then we have our tilt back or a slight tilt forward with this monitor. Now let's plug it in, power it on and try it out. So we have the monitor plugged in and powered on. We had the Cooler Master logo there. Our screen just came into focus. So let's bring up the built-in menu here. Let's go look at our menu settings. So first up, we have our setup menu right here with a lot of different options. So let's go into some of those settings here if we can. So bring it back up. If you can't tell, this is not my favorite style for navigating. I think the layout's great, but it's hard to know which button is which. So in this case, we want to go into these settings and we're just gonna browse each individual one. Adaptive sync, our OSD settings, power indicator, sleep settings, eco mode. You get the idea here. So let's go back out to our next option in the menu. Oh my goodness, come on. All right, here we go. Let's bring up our manual image adjustments. You can see the settings there. We don't have to go into the menu. Color adjustment, same things. There's our settings. Picture mode, we'll cycle through and test those out here in a minute. Our audio settings, we can adjust the volume or mute it. And then we have our input options. We're currently using DisplayPort to get the highest refresh rate possible, which is 165 Hertz. You can do HDMI one or two or USB type C. So that's a quick look at the menu. Now let's talk about some of our menu um, settings here in regards to what we're able to get. So I'm connected via DisplayPort right now and using our, our Windows Advanced Display settings, we are getting 165 Hertz for our refresh rate and we're getting the correct resolution at 2560 by 1440. So if you're not seeing that via HDMI or USB Type-C, go ahead, use DisplayPort. That's gonna give you the best experience possible if you're looking for that high refresh rate. For us, I tried an HDMI cable. We were capped at 144 Hertz. So just keep that in mind. Start with DisplayPort if you have that cable available, if you're trying to get 165 Hertz, but this monitor is as advertised. Now we're gonna look at all the different picture settings. First up, we're in game mode right here. So check out that quality. Let's go into our next option, which is movie. Followed by web. Followed by text. Followed by Mac. Followed by sRGB. Followed by color weakness. And then we're gonna go to standard here. And then if we go back to our game mode, you'll be able to see we have multiple game modes that we can choose from, Gamer 1 or Gamer 2, FPS 1, FPS 2, RTS, or our MOBA settings right there. So when you're playing your game, just cycle through those to find the one that you prefer. We'll leave Gamer 1 there. Let's go back into these settings really quickly and let's do it one more time. So... We're in Gamer 1. Now we're in Movie, Web, Text, Mac, sRGB, Color Weakness, and Standard. I was trying to cycle through them quickly for you guys so you can see how the video stays the same and changes so we don't lose the scenes. but a lot of different modes and options depending on what you're after there. Let's try one more time. Movie, web. They definitely tweak the image, that's for sure. So just find the one that you're comfortable with, the one that you prefer. I still like standard, so typically I leave my monitors in standard. But again, up to you. The beauty is there's a lot of customization there to get the image how you want it. Now we're looking at our UFO test right here. Pay attention to in this corner, you may notice a white spot here. Don't worry about that. That's just reflection from another screen and display on the monitor. I don't want you to think that's part of this monitor at all. You just notice it with this black screen here. But anyways, back to the UFO test. We have multiple FPS values coming in hot at 165 hertz for our refresh rate. Down at the bottom, we have 41 FPS. 
83 FPS and 165 FPS. So 41 FPS definitely has that sputter. The alien looks like it's moving back and forth at the bottom there, staggery, sputtering, that sort of thing. 83 FPS does not look that bad to me, but obviously as we doubled again up to 165, this is where having a higher refresh rate monitor with a system that's capable of matching the FPS to your refresh rate is gonna give you that nice advantage in fluid and smooth gameplay. All right, now let's go and let's talk about backlight bleed and IPS glow. So for this particular monitor, we have all the studio lights turned off here. I even have the displays turned off. I'm looking at this monitor up close and I do notice some spots here. One in particular right here down at the bottom where my finger is. If you can see that, you probably can't. But anyways, right at the bottom where the logo is. And then I noticed near the right hand side of the monitor, if you're looking at it, we have a little bit in this corner right there. Really trying to have a critical eye to look at it, see what I can find. I'd say, depending on where you're looking, the corners. I would say all the corners, I can justify some glow or bleeding or a combination of the two. But keep in mind, that'll vary depending on each individual monitor and panel. So you could have a completely different experience than me. And honestly, somebody like myself doesn't really look at a lot of blank black screens. So when I'm doing any sort of gaming, content creating, web browsing on a monitor like this, I never notice any bleed or glow. But again, that's just me and my eyes and my sensitivity. But yes, if we're looking at it with a full screen, black screen right now, there is some problems, I would say, in the corner. But again, problems is kind of an over um, too strong of a word and a little bit down here by the logo. So just keep that in mind. It's gonna vary literally panel by panel, but nothing with this monitor would make me return it from what I'm seeing here or anything like that. Now it's time to test out the input lag on this monitor. Let's go ahead, let's start measuring right here. And there we go, our input lag is showing up at roughly 1.4, 1.5 milliseconds. Not bad, I wanna see that under two, obviously. Most come in around the one millisecond mark. Let's go ahead, let's try our middle value right here. There we go, 8.8, 8.6 milliseconds. And our last value, I'm gonna be blocking it with my arm here. This guy's so big. We're showing 16.2 milliseconds. So right around 16 milliseconds, eight milliseconds, and 1.4, 1.5 milliseconds for our input leg, that's well within range. Now let's talk about color accuracy and representation with this monitor. Is it as advertised? Well, the first thing I could find that they advertise is right on the front of the box, if you remember, 95% DCI-P3, and that's in regards to volume. I also found looking at the product listing, there's a nice graphic showing 90% DCI-P3 for the gamut coverage. So what results did we get using display count? Well, let's dive into it. First up, our gamut coverage for DCI-P3 was 89.8%. So just a smidge under the 90% as advertised. So that's definitely one for Cooler Master, good enough in my book. Second is our gamut volume. They advertised 95%. We actually got 97%, so we did even better than advertised. I couldn't find any information on their sRGB or their Adobe RGB values, but here is what we got for your records. So 99.9% sRGB for our coverage, and we had 137% sRGB for our volume. Next, we had 86.8% Adobe RGB coverage and 94.4% Adobe RGB volume. Now we can continue to nerd out with a bunch of different tests, but how does it actually look practically speaking? So keep in mind, obviously we have a camera on a screen. It's never gonna be perfect with what it looks like in person, but here we go. We got a couple popular websites up just to show you what it's like to browse the web. First up, we're looking at the YouTube trending page. Very clear, crisp, super responsive. Look as we have that fast movement and motion. You can see the thumbnails, samples of the video starting to play. So everything looks great, sharp, clear, crisp. Same can be said if you want to read some news when you're browsing the web. We got The Verge, a popular tech blog pulled up right here. 
all of our different graphics, images, titles for all the different articles. So let's just go ahead, let's just click on one right here. So we can load the different images, fonts, quotes, ads, headers, footers, comments. Very enjoyable. And then lastly, here we go. We got Amazon pulled up right here. Clear, crisp, everything looks super nice. Enjoyable to browse the web on such a large screen with great resolution and a really high refresh rate. Now we're testing out the built-in speaker quality. We're playing a couple of seconds of the song Dripping With Ice from Chef Media Group, which is home to DMCA free and stream safe music. We got the volume at 100% right now, so let's go ahead and give it a listen. So you might notice it's not very loud with what the mic's able to pick up. Obviously, if you're gonna have this up against a wall, that will help, I'd say, make the sound be a little bit fuller, but it's what you would expect in regards to built-in monitor speaker quality. They're nothing exceptional. I'd say they're definitely average. There's not much bass. The volume, or I should say the sound quality isn't very full, but it does sound nice, right? So it's not distorted or messed up or anything like that. So if you're in a pinch and you want to just use the built-in speakers, you'll appreciate having them when you need them. You didn't think I'd forget about gaming, did you? We got Forza 5 pulled up right now. Look at this footage of our gameplay, right around 100 FPS at 165 Hertz and our 1440p resolution. Love having the large screen size when you're gaming, watching movies, TV, anything like that, streaming your favorite content. But pay attention to the detail and the movement and the motion of our Corvette and the vehicles. Get a feel for what this experience is gonna be like gaming on this monitor, because I know that's what you're gonna be doing. You're also listening to the raw audio again coming out of the speakers. Man, it's clean, it looks clean. Love that Forza 5 footage and gameplay, amazing. Now we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay and footage up again at our native resolution 2560 by 1440. And we have 165 Hertz for the refresh rate and we're currently getting right around 100 or so FPS but just pay attention to how everything looks here as the camera moves and weaves around the level. Different lighting environments, right? You'll see how bright it is in the sky, in the background, the shadows, the shading, the vibrancy of the colors. We're still in standard mode here. Look for any sort of sputtering, tearing, things like that. Look at the smoke, the detail there, the clouds in the sky, the fire. Get a feel for the immersive experience a monitor like this will provide for you when you're gaming. See if it's up to snuff with what you're looking for. The water, the reflections. Looks so good. I like this scene too, it pans out. We see the ruins of the temple there. That's Assassin's Creed Valhalla for you. Now let's talk about next gen consoles. So we have a PlayStation 5 connected to this monitor. Everything works as you would expect. Currently we're showing for our video output information that we're getting 2560 by 1440, which is great. That is the resolution of this monitor. We're at 60 Hertz. So if you're wondering about 120 Hertz, on this 165 hertz display. Right now, we're just at 60, but I'm not positive we'll stay there because you may notice further down, we do have 120 hertz output enabled, but keep in mind it's only for games that support 120 hertz 
frame rate. So I'm not sure how to verify that for you, but at a minimum, you can expect to be able to get 1440p at 60 hertz using a next-gen console. I'd expect a similar experience with the Xbox Series S or the Xbox Series X, and anything else might just be an added bonus and surprise to you. Now we have Fortnite pulled up on our PlayStation 5. Look at the quality right here. We're gonna move around and rotate so you can get a feel for the fast movement and motion and how responsive it is and how everything looks. So far, so good. The colors are great. Really nice and comfortable to game on. Well, there you have it. We just finished checking out the Cooler Master GM32-FQ gaming monitor. If you're looking for a flat screen, 32 inch IPS panel display with 1440p resolution up to 165 hertz refresh rate, look no further. Cooler Master has you covered. I'm happy with this monitor overall. I've really enjoyed using it. In the future, I mean, there's the typical things you'd always say. I'd like higher refresh rates, higher resolution, maybe some more port and configuration options as well, some additional USBs. I'm glad we have two but I get greedy, then I want three, four, right? You get the idea there. But other than that, I think the only thing I would nitpick out of everything that you see here without, you know, what I hope becomes of this model in the future is the included stand. I like it, the quality's great, but I really feel like this stand should be able to give us a nice ability to rotate it, to change the viewing angle to portrait or vertical if we want it. Unfortunately, we don't have that ability, but thankfully this does have the visa mount option for us if that is an avenue you wanna pursue. And they did give us built-in speakers and those USB ports. So whether you're a gamer or a content creator or a professional, you wanna use this for work use, you'll appreciate having everything that's bundled with this monitor.